Hi, I'm John Twist of University Motors, and today I want to talk a little bit more about the all synchro gearbox used from 1968 through 1980, MGB. Dynamite gearbox, wonderful gearbox, but like anything else, there's little tricks and stuff and things that can go wrong. So I'm going to sit in the car here and show you just a little bit about shifting. So when you go to shift, of course, you're shifting forward or one, two, three, four, and to get into reverse, you must slap it. You must slap it. You can pull. I'm pretty, I tell you, I'm pretty strong, but I cannot pull this. But a gentle slap will do it. I had a guy call me on the phone who was trying to get his car into reverse, He's driving him crazy, and I said, slap it. He goes, oh, well, that's easy. Anyway, once it's in gear, let's say that it's in first gear, the gear lever moves around about that much, okay? That isn't, that isn't very much. If the bushing is missing at the bottom of the gear shift lever, then it wallows around on a circle about that big. You can still shift the car, but it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel nice and solid. There's another fault that we'll explain in a later video. But if you're in, in uh, third gear and you accelerate and decelerate and the gear lever physically moves back and forth like that far, if it does, that means that the inside of the gearbox has been built incorrectly. There's some, there's some uh, spacers and, and bushings and if you assemble them incorrectly, you can end up with a floating third gear and that means that as you accelerate and decelerate, this lever moves dramatically. Sometimes it'll move Im almost imperceptibly. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about where it's moving in uh, an inch, an inch or so. Let's take a look f at the uh, at the gearbox itself. So anytime you take the gearbox out of the car you're down doing some work, you might choose to pull the gear lever out to take the gearbox out of the car. You have to take it out. Underneath the gear lever is a little white bushing, 22H15 maybe. Taking it out, you just pull it out. Putting it back in, oh my gosh. You can spend anywhere from five seconds to, I swear, five hours trying to get this bushing back in. It's really dicey trying to get it lined back up and to go into the right place. And if you get it wrong, then the gear lever wallows all around. Again, here, here's this gear, gear lever, and he hasn't got much side to side, and he hasn't got much fore and aft. And that bushing fits right down in the back end here. <clears throat> so if you've got the plate off and you've got the gear lever out and you go to put it back in, you put a little bit of grease on it and you push on the lever and you push and push and fiddle. If you can get your finger up underneath here, you can guide that bushing into place. Oh my gosh, easy schmeasy. But you can't get your finger underneath here when the, when the gearbox is in the car because the, the, the um, oval plate that's on top won't allow your fingers to get down there. It just isn't large enough. So Dudley Bowen, federal district judge, who occasionally works on his friend's MGs, contacted me and asked me how to put this in. And he called me back afterwards and he said, this is what I did. He says, I got it lined up as good as I could. And I put the three bolts in, wiggled it all around, tightened them all up a turn, wiggled it around, tightened them all up a turn, wiggled it all around. In the end, he said it went in just great. I've never tried that method. Dudley said it worked. It may, it may for you, because it can be a real problem. Let's take a look at the second item here, and that's the floating third gear. This is the third speed gear here, and when, when we go to put it in, uh, easy for me to, to do that. When we go to put it in third gear, if this gear is floating back and forth a little bit, and down here it's, um, it's maybe a quarter of an inch. That's about all, all that it floats, uh, if it's assembled incorrectly. And then the gear lever follows that, because the, the sliding hub follows, follows this, this guy. 
and uh, you immediately know that there's a, a problem with the way the gearbox has been built and it has to do with some little ears that fit into a thrust washer and if they stand proud then then you end up with this float on third third gear I want to show you one more thing too so this other problem that you have with this gearbox is this tendency sometimes to fall out of third gear so here, here we got third gear <coughs> and see that, that we're in third here so the gear lever boot is here and the gear lever boot ends up being more stretched to put it into third than it does in, into first besides you're never in first long enough that you have your hand off the gear lever so even if it did pop out of first you wouldn't know because right after you're in first you're in second but anyway from the center line third gear stretches the gear lever boot and so it's tugging at this it's tugging 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 and in the right circumstances I don't know if I can tug enough it'll tug it so much that it falls out of third gear so if your gearbox is falling out of third gear take the gear lever boot off go out and drive it does it still do it or it doesn't do it if it doesn't do it great then make a di get a different gear lever boot something like that <clears throat> however there is yet another problem and that has to do with the detent so up here there is a set of three bolts and those go on to the shift the the, the shift rods if you call them that um, this is uh, reverse one two and three four so this is accessible from inside the car you can reach down um, it's difficult let me tell you you can barely even see it but it is possible even with the manifolding on to get your hand down in here and get that get that out of there underneath that bolt that I just took out lies the spring now if that spring is too weak what are you gonna do well the cheap trick is to take two number eight washers number eight washers see them here okay not number tens number eights and they fit right on top of that spring put a couple of those in there you might choose to flatten them out first so they make better shims but the helix helix in them probably isn't going to hurt anything put those in there put that bolt back on now when it's tight obviously the spring is going to be tighter than it was before therefore it's going to be harder to shift into third gear not so much that you can't do it it's going to feel more positive but maybe the gearbox won't fall out of third gear so now to get us into third it's a, a little harder to press into third than it was before and maybe it won't fall out of third so if it's falling out of, out, out of third gear on decelerations usually check the gear shift boot if that's not the problem go up here and this is these bolts are aligned in the same relationship as the gear lever reverse one two three four and pull these things out put some shims on top if you're building a gearbox put as many shims in there as you can and still have it shift that'll make it nice and solid and positive so those are a couple of notes on this gearbox so until later safety fast